Hello, my name is Shalanda Chaudhary, and in this video, I'll show how to use persistent volumes with Azure Disk in AKS cluster. So, whenever a pod is created, it uses a ephemeral storage, which means whenever pod is destroyed, storage is also destroyed along with it. And in case you are running a container and the container crashes, in that case, there will be the loss of the files. As well as for any reason, if Kubelet restarts the container, then also there will be the loss of the data. And the another problem is you can't share the data between two containers running on a pod. To overcome this problem, I'll be using the persistent volumes with Azure Desk. So first of all, we have to create a storage class. Storage class is a way by which we define how the Azure Desk service will connect to Kubernetes cluster. So we have to define which type of tier we should use, whether it's premium or standard, and what is the reclaim policy, whether it should retain or it should delete which means if the persistent volume claim is deleted, should the Azure disk be also deleted along with it or it should retain and be used when a new persistent volume claim is created. I'll show this in more detail during the demo. So once the storage class is created, now Kubernetes cluster is aware how to use the Azure disk. And to define the different access mode as well as the amount of storage, we have to create the persistent volume claim. So as you can see on the screen, First, we create a storage class and then we create a persistent volume claim. Once persistent volume claim is created, that creates the persistent volume, which depends on the storage class, whether it's for Azure managed disk or it's for Azure files. In this video, we are focusing on the Azure managed disk only, the block level storage. So once the persistent volume is created, it's assigned to the pod directly instead of the node. As you can see on the right side, access mode is retried once. There are multiple access mode like read write once, read only many and read write many. And here it's defined that five gigabytes of storage is required. So the final task here is you have created the storage class persistent volume claim. And now you have to define the volume mounts in the container definition, whether you are creating a pod or you are creating a deployment. So the volume mount has to be defined. And while defining the volume, you have to provide the details of the persistent volume claim. And by this means, once the pod is created, automatically an Azure disk will be created in the background of the same size, which is defined in the persistent volume claim. And then it will be assigned to the pod as a volume mount. By this way, we overcome the problem of ephemeral storage. So let's check this in demo. So this is the same AKS demo cluster, which I have been using in all the videos for AKS. So let's log into CLI. This is my CLI cube CTL get node. And there are two nodes assigned to the cluster. One is system pool, which is specifically for the system resources like the system related pods. And another one is node pool, which is the user node pool where all the containers will be running. By default, Azure provides the storage class. So let's check that. As you can see, there are multiple storage class for Azure files as well as the Azure desk and they have the reclaim policy of delete, which means once the persistent volume claim is deleted, automatically the Azure disk will also be deleted. And there is a volume binding mode defined as immediate or wait for the first consumer, which means if you're creating a persistent volume claim using this storage class, then the Azure disk will be created immediately. However, in the case of wait for the first consumer, Azure disk will not be created till you create a pod or a deployment where it's being used as a volume mount. So let's create a custom storage class. I have created a GitHub repo, AKS Azure Desk, where I've defined the storage class, persistent volume claim, and a pod definition. So let's go to the storage class. So the kind is storage class, API version is K8S, provisioner is Azure Desk, and the reclaim policy is retain, which we are defining. However, there are two different options, either retain or delete. If we are using retain, then the disk will not be deleted once the persistent volume claim is deleted. And in the case of the delete, Azure disk will be deleted immediately once the PVC is deleted. For the volume binding mode, wait for the consumer or the immediate, as I have already defined, wait for the consumer means till the pod or the deployment is created, Azure disk will not be created. And in the case of immediate, as soon as the persistent volume claim is created, it will create Azure disk in the background and allow volume expansion, it's true. You can increase the size of the volume. And in this case, I have set it as true. And the storage account type is premium LRS. I'm using in this case, there are two options, premium or the standard disk. 
and the kind is managed, which is Azure Managed Disk. So this is the storage class which we'll be creating. So I've copied the files here, storage class.yml. This is the same file which I've showed in the repo. So let's apply this. Now the storage class is created. Let's check. So as you can see, a new storage class is created now. In this case, we have made some change because we have defined the Azure disk. These are automatically installed. So we have defined a provisioner for the Azure disk. The reclaim policy is retain and wait for the first consumer and the allow expansion is true. So now the storage class is created. The next step is to create a persistent volume claim. So let's go to the repo and check the persistent volume claim. API version is v1 kind is persistent volume claim. The name I'm defining as Azure Managed Desk PVC. Access mode is read write once. There are three different access mode, read write once, read only many and read write many. If you are sharing the same persistent volume among different pods or containers, then you can use it based on your requirement. The read write many is used in the case of Azure files, which is NFS mount where where multiple pods or multiple containers can write simultaneously. However, if this has to be done in the case of the block storage, then the simultaneous changing in the block can lead to the corruption of data. So the storage class name is defined and the amount of storage, which is four gigabyte. So let's create this. kubectl apply hyphen f pvc dot yml. Now persistent volume claim is created. Let's check. So as you can see, persistent volume claim is created. It's showing as pending. And the reason is because in the storage class, you can see we have to wait for the first consumer. So let's go to the Azure portal and go to the desks. There is only one disk which is assigned to the agent node, which is separate. There are no other disk which is being used by the Azure Kubernetes cluster. So let's create a pod with a volume mount. I'll show this in repo first. So it's a basic pod definition where I'm naming the pod as new pod using the NGNX latest image and the mount path. So the new volume will be mounted at MNT Azure and the volume will be created using the persistent volume claim Azure Managed Disk PVC. So let's create this pod. kubectl apply hyphen f pod.yml. So the pod is created. kubectl get pod. So the container is creating. If we'll describe the pod. So first it started creating the container, successfully pulled the NGINX image, and then it attached the volume, which is persistent volume claim, and is successfully assigned to the new pod. So let's go to the Azure portal and check if any new disk is created. And here you can see a persistent volume claim, a new 4 GB disk, with premium SSD is created now. Let's check the persistent volume claim status now. It was pending previously. Now it should be bound. As you can see, status is bound. It's assigned now. And you can also check the persistent volume, which is created, which is assigned to the container. So it's created using the persistent volume claim. It has a rewrite only access, it's retain, bound. So all the details are present here. Now let's log into the container and create a file in the Azure disk mount so that we can check if the pod is deleted, whether the data is safe or not. So I'm getting the shell into the container. I'm into the container now, cd slash mnt and Azure. So currently there are no files here. Let's create a file. So 
So a new file is created test.txt and it's containing test123. So let's come out of this container and delete this pod. Delete pod, new pod and the new pod is deleted. So if we'll check the status of the persistent volume claim, it's still bound. But if we'll check the pod status, there are no pod. So now let's use the same persistent volume and assign it to another pod. There is another pod definition which I have created. Let me show you. So the name is pod1, same nginx image, mount point is same and it's using the same persistent volume claim. But this is entirely different container and as you know the pods use the ephemeral storage so whenever the pod is deleted all the files should be deleted along with it. But in this case let's see if the files are retained. kubectl ly-f pod new pod is created kubectl get pod this time this pod should be created immediately because it's not creating any azure disk in the background so as you can see attach volume succeeded now the container is running so let's log in into the container we'll use the same command exec command now we are into the container. Let's go to CD, MNT, Azure. And as you can see, the file is still here. Get test.txt and perfect. You can see the file, you can see the data. So which means, so now using the Azure disk, you can retain the volumes created and assign it to different pods. So that means the volume will not be deleted as soon as the container is deleted. The only change here is you have to tweak your application to save the data into a particular volume mount which is defined. Apart from overcoming the problems, one more benefit is you can take the snapshot or the backup of those Azure disk. In case someone deletes the Azure disk or file gets corrupted, then you have the backup. So that is all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.